Evening campers, it's me, Kieran, and as you can tell, I'm getting a perm the longer we get into COVID. Let's just cover it up because we need some dignity on this channel. Buckle up though, people, because we are going to be discussing the remains of the day by Kazuru Ishiguro. Kazuru Ishiguro needs no introduction for myself, but know that this book won the 1989 Man Booker. His other novels are highly acclaimed, so much so that he won the Nobel Prize in Literature. Even though my heart is all for this prize, we can't ignore that once you obtain this, you're not only creating enjoyable and entertaining works of fiction, you're creating important and impactful ones. Impactful is kind of an understatement, because if you have a look at how many people are recommending this novel, it's incredible. And I was always curious to why I had never read this book sooner. Before I delved and ultimately read this book, the only taste I actually had of Ishiguro was Never Let Me Go, and that was only because it was part of a university syllabus. I swooned over Never Let Me Go, so really wanted to get another Ishiguro under my belt. So I was utterly enthralled when I saw the GK Reads, another YouTuber you should check out, was asking the same question as me, which is why is this being left unread? Knowing both of us really wanted to read this book, I did what any sane person would do. I messaged them straight on Instagram. <laughs> and I was so grateful that she didn't think I was a complete weirdo and said yes. And thus begun my first buddy read on Booktube. And it was great. Like us, some of you might not have done a buddy read before. So we basically decided that we would read one chapter each week and discuss to see what happened. The first week all went to plan, we read the prologue, and by the second week I just sent a message saying I'd finished it, but I just read the chapter, and then basically it, <laughs> it turned out into a 24-hour readathon of The Reigns of the Day, so Grace, I'm really, <laughs> really sorry. I'm doing another buddy read with Erin Brought a Book, so Erin, if you're watching this, please, if I say I finished something, please don't read the book, I just read the chapter. <laughs> So, minus the prologue, we basically read 200 pages in six hours due to a silly message that I had sent. The next day in fresh my mind, I thought I would talk to you about the remains of the day, and should you pick it up? Our story is fairly straightforward. Stevens, a old butler who has spent the majority of his service under Lord Darlington, has been asked by the new proprietor of Darlington Hall to go on a, on a trip through England for a week. And for each of the chapters, we are going to venture further into England. But rather than the story focusing on the picturesque countryside, we are delving further into Stephen's memory. Memories of friendships, memories of relatives, memories of colleagues, and memories of the highlights of his career in Darlington Hall. Cascading and spiralling down memory lane, Stevens is trying to figure out what it is to be a good butler. Wondering would he pass or fail a criteria that is never really set out. The want for a butler, servants and house staff is very much becoming a thing of the past. It's very much a dated profession. And the agent Stevens is ruminating and pondering what is he given his life to, especially now as his new empl employer, the American Mr. Faraday, has taken over Lord Darlington after his death. If you look at the surface level, then yes, Stevens is very much a good butler. He has given loyal service to his employer, Lord Darlington. He was there to give advice. He was there to stand by his employer. And additionally, he was part of a elite society of butlers called the Hay Society, which Ishiguro points upon. But that itself has seemed to be disestablished due to the lack and want of that career these days. But therein lies the quandary. It is not who is a good butler? To ask that question, the fingers would point straight to Stevens. But it's what makes a good butler. It is the nuance that Stephen is worried about. Put 110% into something, being loyal to your employer and putting your job above everything else. Yes, that's very credible to some people. But when your boss is a Nazi sympathiser... Questions arise. Think about it. If your boss was doing something unethical and inhumane, would you stand up to that? A butler has to stand by his employer. He is there to be submissive. He is not there to be a dominant. 
submission should just be synonymous with Stevens. To give one example, Lord Darlington wants to fire two staff just because they are Jewish. Stevens never asks any questions, he just does it. When he is questioned on it, it's very much, well, that's what my employer told me to do. This utter devotion and dedication to the job causes repression within Stevens. He only follows what he believes he has to do to carry out his job. Utter devotion and dedication to a job has repressed him. He, he can't form relationships. He can't form friendships. And ultimately, this affects him because he represses his emotions. He does not wish to show any emotion to Lord Darlington for want to disrupt and disturb his day. And to me, it feels that at the beginning of the novel, when the new employer gives Stevens freedom, that only then is he able to open up inside. Oh, as we talk about opening up, let me use that as a tangent to talk about my feelings about this book. It's slow. The entire book is slow. Some paragraphs took me ages to read because I was utterly bored by them. Not only is this repression of emotions affected Stevens, it affects even the sentences themselves. I wanted to believe that when I was reading this book that I would be similar to that of a camera. I would be panning across and then pick it up on little detail. Uh, why do I do the slow walk? Look. <sighs> I think I know what Ishiguro was trying to do. Stevens is completely apathetic, but he's not apathetic because he doesn't care. He's kind of been indoctrinated to think that way, that he just has to follow orders and is a complete robot but i don't feel as though that should impact the entire 200 pages of this novel interactions with characters are as still and as stunted as someone literally describing their work day interactions with characters go nowhere and they're not even characters they're more like pawns i had to like really think of who each character was as i was stumbling across them Maybe if I was putting this down once a week, I would be, like, almost accepting that I forgot names. But after bashing this out, I want to know who is who and how they relate. There's, there's no, like, there's no snappy parts. Like, the, I, I feel as though, like, the high, the high point of this book was probably Stephen's dad dying. But it's done so... Oh, like a matter of fact that it just like loses its impact and the firing of the two jewish girls is again as matter of fact and i i am aware that that's kind of like the point that it was very matter of fact but when you're reading an entire novel that is stunted and is as still as this book you struggle you struggle to to realize like was that the issue I really wanted more for this novel. I thought it was going to come from Miss Kenton and Stevens. <laughs> but it's like a chicken. Like, it wants to fly and it's trying to fly. But it can't fly. Like, nothing got off the ground in this book. Like, nothing got off the ground. I was bored. I was bored. If you see my other reviews, you know that I very much thrive on emotion, like a cathartic experience. And maybe that's why I'm not resonating with this book as well as other people. It's not to say that I don't enjoy slow books. Wolf Hall is, that's a slow book at times. But there was nothing significant that happened in this novel. A lot of reviewers and a lot of the feedback that I pretty much got on this book before I read it was that it picks up towards the end. But I think it only picks up because the chapters are so damn short at that point. I'm torn when it comes to this novel because I know exactly what it's doing and why it's doing it and everything completely makes sense but for a readable experience and an enjoyable experience <sighs> nothing in this book breaks the surface and exclaims and Stephen equally doesn't because he's completely indebted to a career and a lifestyle. 
with sole focus on a character that I don't particularly like because he is so absent of emotion and absent of expression and absent of proclamations of anything. I personally struggled with this. Would I recommend this book? No. But when reading and analysing literature, it's completely okay to fumble along and try to figure out what exactly someone is doing. And do you personally enjoy it? No, but you can appreciate it for what it's done. And especially as a reviewer of literature, I know that I'm going to fall into these difficult situations. And I very much feel that this is a book that's highlighted that for me. My dislike of the book should never hinder your enjoyment of a book. Grace or GK Reads absolutely loved this book. I personally didn't. It's a 4 out of 10 for me, but please don't think I'm going to be giving up on Ishiguro in any way, shape or form. He's got a fantastic repertoire of books, and I'm really keen to read what else he has to offer. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you have any books you would recommend? Please do let me know in the comments down below. Once again, it's been me, Kieran. This has been a book. Tally. Bye.